Welcome to Season 4 of E-Commerce Fastlane. This podcast helps resilient entrepreneurs thrive with Shopify. And now, on to Episode 145. You're listening to E-Commerce Fastlane, the podcast show to help you build, manage, grow, and scale a successful and thriving company powered by Shopify. Listen to real conversations with partners and subject matter experts as they share proven practical strategies, platforms, and the best Shopify apps to help you accelerate your business. The time is now for you to improve efficiencies, grow revenue, profit, and lifetime customer loyalty. Please welcome your host, startup founder and strategic advisor, Steve Hutt. Today's episode is brought to you by Omnisend. If you're in e-commerce marketing and it feels like those weekly newsletters are no longer enough to power your growth, you're going to love Omnisend. With more than 3,000 five-star reviews, Omnisend is the go-to choice for nimble Shopify merchants who want to step up from regular email campaigns so you can actually start increasing your sales, not your workload. With Omnisend, you'll be launching pre-built e-commerce automation in no time, as well as intuitively segmenting customers based on their shopping behavior and even trying out SMS or push notifications, all from the same platform. The best part? Omnisend provides an immediate boost to your revenue while staying as easy as drag and drop email building, with automated emails averaging up to 40% of the total email revenue. Join Duke Cannon, Black Halo, and other high-growth Shopify brands that choose Omnisend to grow their e-commerce business on autopilot. So visit Omnisend.com and start your 14-day free trial today with no credit card required. Well, hey there, it's Steve, and welcome back to the e-commerce Fastlane podcast. Now, if this is your first time listening, This is an e-commerce show where we have honest and transparent conversations about building and thriving with your store powered by Shopify or Shopify Plus. New episodes are available twice weekly with your favorite podcast player like Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, and many more. You can also stream current episodes, including a very relevant back catalog directly from ecommercefastlane.com. Now, in today's episode, I'm super excited. This is one of the rare interviewees that I have today who we have actually are doing a second recording. Believe it or not, uh, I'm going to talk about it in a moment, but it was years ago when I interviewed this this fellow. And his name is Roman, and uh, he is the co-founder and CEO of a company called Gorgeous. And what they are is they really help Shopify brands to turn a lot of their support operations, so email and text messaging and, and live chat and, and quite a few other kind of functionality built into the platform. Instead of being a cost center, it actually turns into a profit center. And we're going to talk a lot about that today. It's super important. It's an interesting, I'd call it an interesting paradigm shift because you know now Shopify brands using the gorgeous platform are able to actually focus on customer interactions and just allow for a lot of these repetitive things just to be resolved through the platform that then gives time for the agents to actually become sales associates and any existing tech stack that you may have gorgeous integrates directly with all the popular pieces of tech you may have so it gives a single pane a single view of the full customer journey from orders and all interaction points including loyalty points and I hope I'm not giving away the farm here, but honestly, Gorgeous does a lot. And there's thousands, I'd say tens of thousands of Shopify brands that are using Gorgeous. So hi, Roman. Welcome again to e-commerce Fastlane. Yeah, thank you so, uh, so much, Steve, for having me a second time. I, I feel uh, very honored to be again on the show. And uh, I just wanted to give you a huge kudos for your pitch as well. It sounds like maybe because it's the second time, but I, I couldn't pitch Gorgeous better myself. So I appreciate the overview. Absolutely. And it's cool. I, I just before recording today, I looked, uh, you were actually episode number two, uh, believe it or not, in June of 2018. Yeah, I, I've heard that startup years are a bit like dog years. So like it, it sounds like uh, <laughs> many, many years ago. 
Yeah, like it's crazy because you know what? We have to make a, a, a pact today that we have to at least have an annual recording because I believe that in two years, I know for a fact how much your platform and number of employees and connections, things have changed massively. And that education component needs to get out there because there's more and more independent entrepreneurs are coming onto Shopify and they shouldn't be just using Gmail to answer their email. And so knowing that, Gorgeous has a really affordable solutions to be able to help people in in their journey from the early stage all the way through to hundreds of seats to run the largest brands in the world. So it's really interesting. So I'm so glad that we're going to hopefully get you once a year instead of once every two years. So let's talk on a high level first. There's a lot of people that may not know who Gorgeous is. And I mean, I kind of gave away a little bit at the top of the show, but I'd love to hear it in your own words. What sort of problems um, does the platform solve for Shopify brands? So I think you gave a, a great description, so I'll be short, but I think the high level of it is that when you build a store, it's all about the relationships that you're going to build with your customers. In the past, in the early days of e-commerce, we were very focused on uh, getting this first sale for a customer. So that was like through ads and you would get a first sale and then you would go acquire some other new customers through ads again. Versus I think now we are more focused on uh, getting repeat customers. And so to get repeat customers, you need to focus on the quality of your e-commerce experience. That's really, really important. And so it turns out the only time when you actually speak with your customers uh, for most merchants is throughout these customer service conversations. And so our goal is to make all of these conversations feel excellent for the customer so that they have a strong incentive to come back and they essentially live with a nice taste of your brand. So let's talk about the journey because I think it's important to kind of set the stage a little bit. A lot of people, myself included, I'm just, I'm very fascinated why people build the products that they build. Like we're, we're talking SaaS companies, B2B companies that are building things to enhance Shopify or to enhance the customer experience. And so I'd love to understand more about, you know, what uniquely positions you and your co-founder, I guess, number one, to have the desire to build gorgeous. And then number two, I guess the expertise to, you know, technically to be able to create this platform. Yeah, so, so I think what got us really excited in the first place is the this big transition that we are witnessing in uh, commerce right now, which is the move from uh, offline to online that was accelerated by the pandemic uh, last year. That's probably what got us excited in the first place. And so what we did is that we uh, decided to uh, shadow agents. And so essentially, we would sit down next to them for hours and hours and trying to understand like what are the few things that could really move the needle so that agents have a better experience because if agents have a better experience, then end customers also have a, a better experience, which is eventually what we all want. So how we got into this was really the shadowing of, uh, of Zendesk agents uh, at the time for the most part. That was about three years ago, four years ago. And so what we found is that there is a big disconnect between uh, typically like the, the support platform that you mentioned Gmail uh, in the description of the show or Zendesk. Like typically, there's a disconnect between those platforms and the information that the agent needs to provide a good customer experience and respond fast. And so that was the initial angle. We said, hey, let's try to bring everything in one place and give a consolidated view of the customer to uh, all of the support agents so that when there's this customer to business conversation, the it feels like the business already knows you. You don't have to repeat yourself. They know what you've ordered. They know, you know if you're part of the loyalty program. Yeah, we integrate with Shopify, obviously, which is the, the main app that we integrate with today. And then uh, there's uh, Ziotpo, there's uh, Okendo, there's Klaviyo, etc., where we pull information from, and then we display that directly on the ticket. So that as a support agent, if I'm responding to your customers, I'm going to have the, everything I need to provide the best possible experience. So that was what led us into the journey. That's one thing that I think is really exciting. And one of the reasons why I recommend Gorgeous to a lot of the brands that I manage are people that are pinging me directly and saying, hey, you know, I'm just, I'm kind of outgrowing hello at my brand.com, which is like through G Suite, just not a great customer experience where overall, when you're right, when you can bring in some of these existing pieces of tech, if it's Yachtpo for loyalty and reviews or reward points uh, through Smile, there's, there's so many interesting pieces of interesting tech that can all come in and then having a single view of the full customer and then being able to, yeah, you're right, not being able to have to repeat yourself. I think it's just important. It almost feels like when you do communicate with somebody, it's nice for them to realize, okay, you do understand who I am. And, you know, automatically the phone number or the email address will automatically pull up all the order history, any kind of communication that's happened through email over the history, um, any kind of social interactions that have happened. Like what if somebody DMs you? And there's lots of things happening now with social media where a lot of times they just go unanswered and they're in la-la land. And so 
interesting that Gorgeous is thinking about all these sort of things and all these different touch points of a customer and a customer journey. And as soon as they're interacted with uh, you know, an agent through live chat or through phone or through email, there are ways of communicating with these customers, almost like building this one-on-one relationship. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's exactly that. And there's lots of customers that reach out to a business on email, for example. Typically, like the response time on email is like between 6 to 24 hours, so it's super slow. And then they would reach out to you again on Instagram DMs and Messenger. And then like as a, as a business, like you get sort of overwhelmed by this, uh, the, these messages from the same customer. And so I think like there's a essentially like adopting some structure to that, uh, making sure like you reconcile all the conversations under one customer and in one platform saves a ton of time to, to serve the customer better. So let's talk about customer experience and just customer support in general, because I think it's it's extremely hot topic right now. I think it's the differentiator to a lot of successful brands right now is just how they position themselves and how they manage and just outwardly have technology to support their customers. Do you have any case studies or any kind of brands that you can kind of publicly talk about that you believe are offering you know great support or great customer experiences and maybe and why? Yeah, sure. So I'll speak about the why because I think that's the, that's the most important point. So we recently did a, an interesting um, analysis on our, on our customers at Gorgia. So we essentially, we have 6,000 merchants. And so what we did is that we broke down this list of 6,000 merchants uh, into four groups of customers based on the quality of their support. So essentially, how fast they respond to the first message, how fast they resolve the problem, and what is the, the satisfaction rating at the end of the conversations. And so we essentially came up with these four levels, like four being the, the best level. And so I'm going to talk about two level four brands that are Decathlon and Hello Toshi. First of all, like they respond really fast to customers and there's a strong correlation between how fast you respond and the perception of quality for, for customers. Hello Toshi does something really interesting. They, they have um, essentially when a message comes in, what they do is that they... Um, classify the message automatically into about 10 different buckets. So whether it's a return request, an order edit, a shipping status question. So that essentially like as an agent, I already know what things are going to be about. So if I just focus on returns, I'm going to do like 10 or 15 returns in a row. So I'm just going to be faster at doing them and give a better experience to the, to the customer. So that's, right. I think, a good trick that everybody can uh, implement. It's just like implement some automatic filtering of, uh, of tickets so that you can triage them uh, in different buckets and then like deal with similar tickets, you're just going to be faster. And if you're faster, you're going to have a queue that's smaller and customers are going to get a faster response. At the end of the day, the experience is better. So that, I think, is a pretty uh, very actionable uh, insight that you can do for, for your own store, uh, whether you're on Gorgeous or not. So the second one I want to talk about is uh, Decathlon. I live in San Francisco and they have, uh, I think, three or four stores uh, here in SF that had to uh, shut down at the beginning of the pandemic. And uh, what's really exciting about them is that they actually got the sales associates from the stores to uh, start selling on the chat. So essentially, they sell a sportswear product. And so when you sell these types of product, there's typically a few questions before you buy. Yeah, let's say you want to go uh, for a hiking trip. Like you, you might have a few questions on like, uh, hey, like what is the best pair of shoes given the nature of my hike? And so the thing that they've done really well is that they followed the touch playbook, which is to um, try to be as efficient as possible on the, the reactive questions that you might get from your, from your customers. So that they have the time to be proactive with the customers that are on the website trying to figure out what they want to buy. If you spend some time with Decathlon, you'll see that uh, when they're on the chat, like they're super proactive about engaging with you, uh, suggesting the right products. And you're not talking to like a, a random support person who's going to help you out in general because they have like, I think, uh, thousands of SKUs. But instead, like they're going to route you. Like if you're asking about like a hiking question, you're going to speak with a hiking specialist. And I think that... Uh, that definitely helps with the customer experience and with the conversion of the website. Yeah, and these are pretty large Shopify Plus brands, both Hello Tushy and uh, Decathlon. I know they're in Canada too at decathlon.ca and decathlon.com. I think they're around the world actually. And that's really great that they're able to do some fun things. Like I love the filtering idea. What I've learned lately about customer service and customer support, and I guess one of the benefits of your platform is, is that it's nice to be able to start categorizing and understanding your customers and the sort of questions that they're asking. And I think at some point, either it's live now 
or soon to come as part of the Gorgeous platform. But, you know, usually live chat um, on uh, a website to me uh, means there's a pulse and there's something actually going on. And what's interesting, um, I know you connect to third parties, but maybe there's going to be some native things that are coming soon with an AI chat bot. But I think it's quite interesting that, you know, when someone lands on a website, I think it's exciting to say, hey, you know, welcome. And by the way, uh, you know, are you looking for a return? Uh, would you like to talk to a live agent? And then maybe asking a couple, two or three kind of key questions or some key links to some things, things that are on sale or promotional things. But that is built into the tool or into the, the chat widget itself and then can allow for a self-serve model like, hey, what's my tracking number? Well, if you're already logged into Shopify and you have a known identity, then why can't we just direct you over with a link directly over to the, you know, to the, your landing page, you know, on gorgeous or over on the website with your tracking details. And so I just would love to hear where you're at today from a live chat perspective, both from maybe from a self-serve model, which is where's my tracking number or what's your return policy versus maybe I want to talk to a live agent to help me find something. Yes. Uh, that's a really interesting question. So you get lots of customers reaching out to you on the chat. And so we've done some research on the millions of uh, customer conversations that we get. And we found that specifically on the chat, there's about 50% of them that are repetitive. So like you said, like returns, where is my package, etc. So for these people, what you want to do is to try to send them to a self-serve flow at first so that they can self-serve and find the, the answer to their question. Uh, without requiring time from your team. And in that, in that case, everybody wins because the customer finds a, a quicker answer and you don't have to allocate resources to it. So I think uh, it's really important that you uh, deploy these uh, self-serve mechanisms because that's going to free up time for your team so that they can essentially like, spend more time on the, the pre-sale conversations or the conversations with your most loyal customers. To, to answer your question, like there are two directions in which we're going for the chat. Number one is definitely the self-serve to uh, get to deflect about 40% of tickets. And then number two is to uh, get your agents to, to sell. For this in particular, like what, what we've implemented since our last podcast uh, three years ago is uh, we, we now track the conversion of the chat. So uh, typically there's about, I want to say about 3% of conversion on the overall. So that means like when a customer reaches out to support, there's a 3% chance that you convert this customer to uh, for a new sale. And the chat can go as high as like 20, 25%. So if you're looking for a way to boost your sales, uh, there's definitely an opportunity here that's typically under tapped is to uh, essentially save time for your agents so that afterwards they can make product recommendations. And since you were asking me about like what's coming next, so um, yeah, there's a lot of things that we are uh, shipping on the chat. So the ability to uh, insert products for the customer to go to uh, directly at the right page with the right variants. And so the, essentially like when the, the customer is saying, hey, I'd like to buy some shoes for my uh, hiking trip, the agent is able to search the catalog, find the right pair of shoes, select the variants, select, like, for example, the color, and then make sure they are actually in stock and then make the recommendation to the customer. And so when you send that to the customers, there's a very high chance that they actually convert and buy these shoes. So essentially, yeah, focusing on those two use cases, one is self-serve and then the other one is uh, sales. I think there's probably a few other scalable tactics i think that are available i mean one you've kind of alluded to a little bit about maybe you want to automate some of the basic questions that people are asking and when i say automation i almost think of like canned responses i think trying to figure out a ways of kind of the remedial tasks that need to be answered it's nice to have it be on brand with a proper canned response i know you have this functionality you can quickly instead of the agent having to think on the fly and then you're not really sure if they're answering in the right tone and the right voice and correctly along with the brand where you know someone in a leadership position for the brand could pre-write a lot of the most popular response, a lot of things, and then they can be tweaked and reorganized. I know you have a lot of different fields and things that can be auto-populated um, as necessary. So that's kind of maybe some automation of some of the basic questions or through canned responses. Is there anything else that you can think of about like like workflows? I know you talk about triaging tickets and things, but I'm just I'm curious about maybe macros and all these different things that are available. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I think uh, an easy one is um, typically you have your customer communications on email and chat. We talked about those. And then there might be another team that's typically like marketing, for example, that would work on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And so I think uh, one of the key things to do is that at some point as you grow past like your million in GMV uh, on the way to 10 or 100, 
you're going to get a lot of these messages on uh, Instagram DMs, Messenger, etc. So one of the things you want to do is to avoid having two different teams manage those similar queues. Or, and so you, you want to agglomerate that under like one roof so that there's the, the same voice, like you said, for your customers. So I think that's definitely something that's uh, actionable and that you should do now for, for your brand. I'll say another one is... Um, We've been able to um, do some research again, and uh, we found that there's about a third of your customers that are likely to, to come back for a second sale. And so what you want to do with them, like if you identify like with a tool that they have a high purchase intent, or on, on the other hand, if you identify that you have like some super like VIP customers that are extremely loyal, that have purchased, let's say, four plus times with you, uh, what you want to do is to tag these people and to give them VIP service. Like, Essentially, like if you were to go down uh, the streets to a store that you're super familiar with and you go every day, uh, they're going to remember your name. They're going to give you like a, a great treatment. And then you're going to be like, oh, shit, like, I, I really like this uh, experience. So you want to replicate that online. Like when somebody uh, has bought from your brand several times or when they have a high chance of doing so, uh, what you want to do is triage these uh, customers and make sure like they get instant responses. You personalize the responses a little more. You make proactive suggestions. So these are a few ideas of things that you can do to, to improve your customer experience and specifically focus on the most valuable customers for your brand. Now, retention is, is another topic that comes up quite a bit also in my conversations that I have with brands every day. And it's pretty common knowledge that the CAC, this customer acquisition costs are quite high just because of the competition, because of the pandemic um, and just time now, it is quite expensive to find and acquire a new customer. So you have this customer. And so the lifetime value of that customer is like super important. Do you have any insider little tips or any kind of research that you've done about like how gorgeous is, I guess, assisting with your platform and with agents to be able to just help with retention in general? I know you've, you've mentioned a few things already, but I just would love if you had anything else that you can expand upon. Yeah, sure. The challenge with uh, retention is that it's hard to find if what you do is causing retention or if it's a correlation, but not necessarily directly impacting it. So I just want to like sh share some numbers with, with a bit of a, an honest uh, disclaimer uh, first. But essentially what we found is that the, the most loyal customers are the most likely to be in touch at some point in their experience with your customer service team. And so like at some point you're going to get like 50, 60, 80% coverage on your, your most loyal customers. Uh, with support. So I think uh, it's really important to, to stress this idea of saying that they're going to reach out to you and uh, you're going to have this opportunity to wow them. And so you don't really want to, you really want to make sure like you, you don't screw it. And you like, actually, like when you have this customer that has spent like a thousand dollars with your brand and reach out, reaches out to your support team, like you want to make them feel like they are really important for your business. And so that's what I, I would stress is really like to flag the most important customers and just be cognizant of the fact that your most loyal customers are going to be in touch with your support team no matter what. And uh, I think most brands think, well, like marketing, 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 like what is the way to uh, send them newsletters, uh, get them to open your email. But your marketing email might have like a 30% open rate, but guess what? Your, your support emails have a, like a 99% open rate. So I, I really recommend you, you take advantage of that. This is a nice pivot, actually, now that I'm thinking about it or a segue, because you know, I mentioned at the top of the show about the fact that I know that Gorgeous as a platform really is a profit center. And you're, you know, you're sharing a lot of things about, you know, allowing agents now to have more time available for high value tasks and to be able to be salespeople, to help people. Obviously, generating revenue is like super important, but can you really talk about why you know, and I know for a fact that Gorgeous is really making an impact on the bottom line? Cause your, your platform is not free. There's, there's a costs associated to running it. It's very affordable based on number of tickets and things that you're touching. And, and, and part of, I think you have unlimited seats, but you're, it's based on a ticketing system. But so at the end of the day, it's like, well, wait a second here. It's going to cost me money to use the platform, but then is this really generating revenue? I'd love to hear a couple of tactics that you have with this. So just on the cost side, if you make $100 of sales, like typically you're going to spend about $3 on, a, on support. And for these $3, it's like two dollars and uh, let's say 90 cents are going to be like human cost and then like 10 cents is going to be software 
I know like when you, when you buy software, you, you want to optimize for cost, obviously, and that makes a lot of sense. But I think like the, the one that really moves the needle is actually like how efficient is your support team at responding to the messages from customers, because that's where you, most of your money is going. So I, I just want to stress that because I think it's really like how you can move the needle. Like if you increase the, the, the productivity of your support team by 30%, then you offset like the, the cost of your whole software stack for, for a year. So it's, it's pretty valuable. As far as like, what are some ways to generate revenue? There are a few ideas. So first, uh, you want to align incentives. So essentially, the way uh, most merchants think about support is like, hey, it's a cost center, I have to pay. So we mentioned like about 3% of the, the, the total order value. But if you manage to switch this uh, mindset towards more like, hey, like how much can be generated by my support team, then uh, you can set the right incentive. Let me give you an example. Now, we have a merchant, they used to uh, just like focus on first response time, resolution time, satisfaction. And what they did is that they started to give, I think it's about 5% of the sale made by the agents as bonuses to them. It can also be a bounty program, like the best selling agent makes like an extra $500 of a bonus or whatever you want. And so what we've seen is that before, like the sales from support was like, like three or 4%, so like not really happening. And they managed to get this number to like more like 15, 20%. Let's say you're a store that's making about a million in GMV and you have about 10% of your, your customers that reach out to support. If you have this lift, it can account for like tens of thousands of dollars. The first thing you want to do is like create this incentive for your support team to, to sell so that they actually do it. And then the second thing is that there's plenty of tactics that you can uh, focus on. So an easy one is to have a pop-ups. So essentially, we have uh, something called chat campaigns. So when you spend more like 20 seconds on a given page, uh, you can pop up a message that... Uh, uh, says, uh, hey, uh, like, can I help you out with uh, the name of the product? And then you contextualize it to the, the, the product name. So that's definitely one. Uh, I think another thing we're going to do in Q2 or Q3 is to launch uh, videos as well so that you can have somebody on your team like pitch the product. And then if somebody wants to react, that uh, generates conversation. Roman, as you know, like the show, I know it's been two years, but it does have a diverse range of entrepreneurs that listen each week. And I know you're in a very unique position like your vantage point is unique because so many people are connected to your platform you're doing a lot of research and so what advice would you give brands today uh, store owners today that are they're eager to grow and some of these enterprise brands are really looking to scale up and so just i would love to hear what you believe people should be working on yeah so i think uh, my answer to that is to focus on retention from day one it's not as sexy as getting more sales because like when you get more sales, like you do your campaign and then you see the uh, immediate uh, impact of this or like within a few days. Uh, and so that's really exciting. But the thing is, if you want your business to really succeed, you need to focus on this uh, retention piece because it compounds over time. And so what I would really encourage you is to say, hey, like, OK, I've acquired a customer. If my repeat is like three X, so let's say they're going to buy another two times. You can essentially, like, instead of counting one sale, you can count three. So, yeah, I think that's the way I would approach it. I know it's a bit of a mindset change, but uh, I think it's very important. So let's talk about the future for Gorgeous. Uh, I know it's definitely iterated. I mean, I like I said, I've been front lines watching this platform continue to evolve and more and more customers are making the Gorgeous choice. Are you able to share any North Stars, I guess, for the remainder of 21, partner alignment, innovation? I just would love to understand a little bit of your mindset around how are you going to continue to offer value and, and keep iterating the platform? I have uh, quite a few things to say here. The first one is that uh, we, we've started to build this um, intelligence layer of saying, hey, like, how good are brands are giving support to, to their own customers? And so something that we are launching uh, in the coming weeks now is a, a level system where we can say, hey, like, you're level one, you're doing a, a decent job, but here is how you can get to level two, and, like how to accelerate your response time, how to increase your satisfaction, Etc. And so essentially, it's not so much about getting people to use Gorgeous and to say, uh, hey, like, here's how you can use the, the product better. But it's more about saying, hey, like, how can you leverage Gorgeous to get the best customer experience for your, for your customers? And so that's going to be the key focus for, for our team. Like every time we launch a feature, we think about like, hey, how is that going to accelerate the response time of our merchants so that they give a better customer experience? So that's definitely number one in terms of uh, what we are we are focusing on. Number two, and you, you mentioned that also in the introduction, is that we, we partner a lot with uh, other apps in the ecosystem, with Shopify. And so we want to build a, a platform around Gorgeous. And so we started by uh, opening our API and uh, we're launching a partner portal in the coming weeks as well to empower other apps to connect with us and generate more value for, for the merchants. And so I'm really, really excited about this. 
I know you had uh, Harley on your show uh, not so long ago who did a great job at Shopify like making this uh, a platform. And I think like uh, one of the reasons Shopify is where they are today is because they were so successful at being a platform. So for us, that's uh, that's extremely important. Yeah, another one is uh, we want to automate about 40% of the support. And so that's why we've been focusing on the self-service. There's also an FAQ uh, being rolled out in a, in a few months uh, with some self-service there as well. That's a pretty important component to uh, to automate some of the support. And I'd say the last piece is to uh, essentially push more towards uh, leveraging these conversations as a way to drive revenue. And so for now, we track the performance of these conversations. But there are many things that we can do to, uh, yeah, helps your support team uh, sell and uh, increase your GMV. Yeah, I'm excited for these updates because I know it, there's there's tons they can do right now. But man, oh man, just uh, once again, that single pane of view, like if you've not seen what Gorgeous can, looks like and what it can do, please download it. We'll talk about it in a few minutes about how you can get an extended trial, download it, add it onto your system, to add on your email, like your Gmail account, and then see what gorgeous shows and i know there's there's some really good onboarding sequences and things like that to help brands um you know there's some white glove service available too for those that require it so it's so interesting so let's talk about any closing comments i mean you've told you've shared a lot today but is there any any takeaways or any kind of learnings that you would like to leave with our listeners today yeah i think the, the one thing i want to share is that i'm extremely excited about uh, e-commerce right now because we, we've seen a few iterations of commerce like there, there's been like globalization and now there's this move from uh, offline to online that's that's really starting to happen everywhere and so i think it's a great time to be in the space like there's lots of opportunities either for for merchants or for uh, apps like us and so uh, yeah i think let's all build the, the next version of commerce so how can people learn more about uh, your solution yeah we spend a lot of time talking to uh, to our customers and to merchants so if you want to speak with somebody on the team you can just book a demo on the website and our team is super available and would love to talk about like how we can improve your, your customer experience. So that's definitely a way of doing it. And we also uh, on the Shopify app store. All right. And that's uh, gorgeous.com. So G O R G I A S.com. You can go there and I'll have these links in the show notes too, uh, for the Shopify app store. And you can see uh, the link and you can download that app. I know we did speak offline today before recording and understand that you would like to offer, I guess a little listener only uh, promotion or bonus. Yeah, if you mentioned you come from the show, we can offer a second month free to uh, all of the listeners. So essentially, uh, just reach out to our team on the chat and uh, we'll make sure to apply that to your account. Beautiful. And I will have a landing page link, uh, ecommercefastlane.com forward slash gorgeous, and that'll redirect you to different places to learn number one about this offer, um, just a few more details and stuff. The show notes will have all the links and stuff that we've talked about today, even the, the stores of Decathlon and a few others. And so I just wanted to, you know, Thank you personally again for coming on the show, sharing your knowledge and your vision and just so excited for you. It just, you know, we met, I guess in Toronto, I think at a conference, this must have been in 2018, maybe 2018 or 2017 for a Shopify Unite, the partner conference, I believe. Absolutely. Yeah, I remember that. I remember we had a nice a nice afternoon. It was great. It was great to meet you in person, and I'm just so excited that you know your team is growing. I understand you had a funding round. Things are really starting to come together for you, and you know you are making a lot of impact with Shopify brands. I just want to thank you for coming on the show, and I just wish you awesome success as you continue to scale up. Yeah, I really appreciate that. Thank you so much, Steve, for having me on the show. Yeah, I think when we met, we were we had about like 300 merchants on Gorgias. Now we have like 6,000 plus. And so I think what's really uh, what's really great about working with a large number of merchants is that you can really learn from everybody and then suggest best practices to the newcomers or to the, the merchants that, that have been using Gorgeous for a while. So I'm really, really excited about this. Beautiful. Paying it forward. All right, Roman, have yourself a great day. You too. Bye, Steve. E-commerce Fastlane is brought to you by OmniSend. OmniSend is an email and SMS marketing platform built for nimble Shopify merchants who want to increase their sales and not their workloads full Shopify integration, pre-built automation workflows, intuitive segmentation, and no code editing makes it easy to get up and running without diving into the nitty gritty details, unless you want to. More than 50,000 e-commerce brands use OmniSend to grow their businesses on autopilot, converting their customers with quick to build, highly relevant emails and texts. So visit OmniSend.com, start your 14 day free trial today with no credit card required. Well, that's it for today's episode. I'd like to thank you personally for being a loyal listener of e-commerce Fastlane. It's my hope that this podcast is offering you a ton of value through growth strategies, 
tactics, and exclusive insider tips on the best Shopify apps and marketing platforms, all with my personal goal to help you build, manage, grow, and scale a successful and thriving company powered by Shopify. Thanks for investing some time today and listening to the show. I'm so proud and excited that you have a growth mindset and are a constant learner. I truly appreciate you and your entrepreneurial journey. Enjoy the rest of the week and keep thriving with Shopify.